Hello, I'm Rosa Rademakers. I'm an associate professor here in the neuroscience department at the Mayo Clinic Jacksonville in Florida. I'm a neurogeneticist and my laboratory is interested in the identification of novel genes and genetic risk factors for two related neurodegenerative disorders called frontotemporal dementia or FTD and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS. Now in this week's issue of the journal Neuron, we report a very exciting novel discovery. We were able to find a new genetic mutation that is the most common cause of FTD and ALS that has been identified to date. Moreover, it's the first common genetic cause that actually can lead to the development of both of these disorders. Now, FTD is an early onset form of dementia, which means that usually patients present with the disease before the age of 65 years. Um, in contrast to Alzheimer's disease, where patients usually have memory problems as, as their first symptoms, these patients have problems with their uh, personality, behavioral changes, and sometimes also language impairment. Unfortunately, there's no treatment for FTD, and patients usually die five to 10 years after the first symptoms of the disease appear. ALS, which some of you may better known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a devastating disorder that is caused by the loss of certain type of cells in the brains and spinal cords of patients called motor neurons. And these motor neurons are responsible for controlling muscle activity, and therefore patients have problems with walking, speaking, and also swallowing and breathing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, ALS is fatal and leads to the disease approximately three to five years after onset. Now, for many years, people have realized that FTD and ALS actually have a lot in common. And about 50% of patients with ALS also have certain cognitive and behavioral problems similar of FTD. And at the same time, about 50% of patients with FTD also have some symptoms of motor neuron involvement. And also in the literature, uh, many families were reported where some patients had FTD, some had ALS, and some actually had symptoms of both of these disorders. And we, as well as many other groups, have been able to show that the disease in these families was caused by a genetic mutation on chromosome 9. However, using the normal conventional methods, we were unable to find for many years what, what exactly was causing the disease in these families. So what we're reporting now in this issue of Neuron is that we were finally able to identify what is causing the disease in these families. It turns out that there is a small piece of DNA that in normal healthy individuals was repeated only about 2 to 20 times. But in patients with FCD and ALS in these families, this piece of DNA is now repeated hundreds or even thousands of times. And we believe that that is what's causing the disease in these families. Now initially we studied this in a large family that we work on with our colleagues here at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, but also with our colleagues at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and with external collaborators at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver in Canada, as well as at the University of uh, California in San Francisco. But to get an idea of what the importance of this gene is for the general population of FTD and ALS patients, we studied large uh, series of clinical patients that were ascertained here at the Mayo Clinic. It turns out that about 22% of familial ALS patients that were seen here at Mayo actually have this particular genetic mutation, and also 4% of sporadic patients with ALS. So this means that even in patients that do not have a family history of this disorder, they can still get the disease because of this mutation. In FTD, we found that 12% of our familial FTD patients had this mutation, as well as 3% of sporadic FTD patients. Now, if we compare those numbers with the numbers that we know from the previously found genes for FTD and ALS, it's very clear this is the most common cause of FTD and ALS that has been identified to date. And as I said previously, it's also the only gene that can actually lead to the development of both FTD and ALS. Now, what does it mean for our patients? Every time we find a new gene, it's extremely exciting because a discovery of a new gene tells us something about the disease mechanism, about what is causing the disease in these patients. And unfortunately, this will not lead to a therapy tomorrow, but over the next several years, we can start to develop cell models and animal models based on this new finding, and we can start to identify new therapies for FTD and ALS, and hopefully this will lead eventually to a better or a treatment for these devastating disorders.